Number 42. Some bacteria are resistant to the antibiotic penicillin because they produce penicillinase, an enzyme with a molecular weight of 3 times 10 to the 4 grams per mole that converts penicillin into inactive molecules. Although the kinetics of enzyme-catalyzed reactions can be complex, at low concentrations this reaction can be described by a rate law that is first order in uh, the catalyst penicillinase, and that also involves the concentration of penicillin. From the following data, 1.0 liters of a solution containing 0.15 micrograms, which is the same thing as 0.15 times 10 to the negative 6 grams, of penicillinase, determine the order of the reaction um, with respect to penicillin and the value of the rate constant. So a lot of uh, talk, right? But it comes down to basically the last sentence where all we have to do is just determine the order of the reaction with respect to penicillin and the value of its rate constant, and they give us a chart. Lovely. So in this case, we only have one concentration value, right? We only have one reactant because penicillin is reacting with that catalyst penicillinase, right? So for different concentrations of penicillin, the rate of the reaction is going to be, um, you know, different. And that's what it says here, right? If I have two times 10 to the negative six um, molarity of penicillin, I'm going to have a rate that comes out to being 1.0 times 10 to the negative six uh, molarity uh, per minute. Three times 10 to the negative six molarity of penicillin increases the rate a little bit. More concentration increases the rate even more. But the idea here is that we have to find out the order with respect to penicillin. Order of reactions always come from the rate law. And if we want to find out an order, secretly what this means, an order is always going to be your exponents. It's the exponents of the rate law. And the rate law is right here, right? A rate law generally is rate equals K times the concentration of the reactants raised to their orders. So in this case, we have rate equals K times the concentration of the reactant. In this case, we have penicillin, right? So maybe we'll just write, okay, penicillin, which, you know, shout out to everybody who is allergic to penicillin, myself included. Love it. Penicillin raised to the orders. That's what we don't know. And it's the exponent. I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to solve for X. Now, when they're giving you uh, a chart here, right? The easiest way to go about this is to always make a ratio. What you're going to do is you're going to take one rate law with one values and put it over another rate law with another set of values. Now, in this case, since we only have one reactant, it doesn't matter which, you know, two you choose. But the, the easy thing here, and what I can recommend, is that you always make your ratio in which you have a higher rate and divide it by the rate law that has a lower rate. Because once it comes down to the math, this is going to give you whole numbers, which is easier to work with, versus the other one, which will give you fractions. So I like to use higher rate over lower rate, and that's basically my only guideline here. So as I'm going to pick two trials, and maybe we'll say that we have trial number one, or you could say experiment, you know, number one, here's trial number two, and here is trial number three. Let's see. So I'm going to scan. Um, I mean, I have one, 1 1.5, and two. They're all raised to the 10 to the negative 10th, so maybe I'll just take, I don't know, we'll do trial number three and divide it by trial number one. Those numbers look good, two and one. That looks easy for me. So what you're going to do is you're basically going to, you know, plug in a rate law for trial three and divide it by a rate law for trial one. So let's put in all trial three values. The rate for trial three was 2.0 times 10 to the negative 10th equals 
the rate constant, which we don't know what it is, okay, times the concentration of the penicillin for trial 3, which was 4, 4.0 times 10 to the negative 6, and that's all raised to the x value. Then we do the same thing. So we're going to divide it by, divide it by trial number 1. The rate for trial number 1 was 1 1.0 times 10 to the negative 10th equals the rate constant. We don't know, but whatever. <laughs> and then uh, trial 1's value is 2.0 times 10 to the negative 6, and that's raised to the x. Okay. Um, so now we just simplify, right? Even though we don't know what the rate constants are, k divided by k just gets canceled. Okay. And now we just do a little bit of math, right? We have to do this, but the exponents are going to cancel out because 10 to the negative 10th divided by 10 to the negative 10th is going to be 1. So all we're doing, and this is taking way too long, we only like to color at the end. Maybe I'll just do this. That's good enough. 2 divided by 1 is 2 equals, same thing goes here, right? My exponents are the same, 10 to the negative 6, so they will cancel. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And that's both raised to the x. So now you say 2 to the what will get me 2. Yeah, you got it. x equals 1. So that means that the order for the penicillin is going to be first order. Yay! So if you wanted to simplify this, right, we could say that this is just rate equals k uh, times penicillin raised to the first. Um, but anything that's raised to the first is just the same. So the order of the reaction with respect to penicillin is first order. So we'll say first order with respect to big P, penicillin. Penicillin, okay. And that is the first answer. So now we color in nice little sunshine. I almost said sunshine red. Sunshine yellow. Love the color. Okay. All right. Now, in this case, if we just read a little bit backwards, part, you know, back into the question, it did say that this reaction can be described by a rate law that is first order in the catalyst, which is, which is penicillinase, and that, that also involves the concentration of penicillin. So technically, our full-blown rate law is when we have penicillin being raised to the first, which we just found out, times by the catalyst, which is penicillinase. Now, the only reason why we didn't include penicillinase um, when we did our math is because that concentration wasn't changing. So every time that we would have done this, we would have canceled out penicillinase to begin with. But now we have our rate law. And now from there, we can find out the value of the rate constant. Okay. So now um, I guess what we're going to do is we're just going to use our rate law and we can pick out any one of these trials. It does not matter which one it is. So I guess since maybe I didn't use trial two, right? I guess we'll use trial two, but you could use trial one, trial three, you know, it doesn't really matter. If you want, try out a different trial than me and see if your numbers match. So I'm going to do all my math for trial number two. So for trial number two, my rate is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10th. That's the rate. And I'm just plugging and chugging right into this equation. So 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10th equals the rate constant, which is K times the concentration of penicillin. For trial two, concentration of penicillin was 3.0 times 10 to the negative six. Now comes the penicillinase. Well, in the equation or in the question, they didn't really give me a molarity for penicillinase, right? They gave me that we had 
0.15 times 10 to the negative 6 grams of penicillinase. So from that information, I have to find the molarity. Well, remember that a molarity is always equal to the moles divided by the liters. They did say that we had a 1.0 liter solution, so that's taken care of. But now, i got to find the moles. They gave me grams. But I know how to go from grams to moles, right? To go from those grams to those moles, all we have to do is just divide by the molar mass. But what's the molar mass of penicillinase? Ha ha! The molecular weight, which is the molar mass, right? 3 times 10 to the 4th grams per mole. So we're just going to take the uh, 0 0.15 times 10 to the negative 6 grams and divide it by 3 times 10 to the 4th. So let's go for it. 0.15 times 10 to the, love that EE button, divided by 3 times 10 to the 4th. Okay, a really, 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 really small amount of moles, but that's okay. 5 times 10 to the negative 12 moles, and that's the number that goes on top. Okay, let's find out that molarity. Molarity equals, this is going to be the same, right? Because it's just 5 times 10 to the negative 12 divided by 1. So, 5 times 10 to the 12th, capital M, for penicillinase. So that's the number that goes over here. So 5 times 10 to the negative 12th. And that's being raised to the first because they did say that it was first order for penicillinase. So now we're just going to solve for K. 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10th equals the k value times by those two numbers together, right? So 3 times 10 to the negative 6 times that number, I get 1.5, 1.5 times 10 to the negative 17th, and then we just want to divide by 1.5. 1.5 times 10 to the negative 17th on both sides. And let's see what we get. It's going to be a 1 something, right? 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10th divided by this number. There we go. And uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So my k value is going to equal 1.0 times 10 to the 7th. Now the question is, what are the units? What's the units of K, right? Now, K is a little tricky. The rate constant is tricky because the units of K will always change depending on what's the overall order. And our overall order is the total number of orders that are in our rate law. Penicillin was raised to the first. Penicillin ACE was raised to the first. So 1 plus 1 is a total of 2. If, oop, can't do that. If you have an overall order of 2, your units of K are going to be 1 over molarity times seconds. And actually, in this case, maybe what I'll say is it going to be molarity to the minus 1 times time to the minus 1. So maybe, maybe what I'll do here, units of K is molarity minus 1 time minus 1. So just be careful as to what time they give you. In this example, the time that they gave us was in minutes, not seconds. So in this case, we'll have molarity to the minus 1, minutes to the minus 1. And that is your final answer. So you got a really, 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 really large K, which means that this reaction is going to be happening pretty quickly. And that's it. What do you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you in more questions, okay? All right. Um, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Bye-bye.